up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I'm Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2023 Chevy Traverse, courtesy of Apple Chevrolet in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so, we are in this one today because there are actually a few nice changes for the 2023 Traverse. Not only that, this thing gives you very, very generous cargo space, more so than the Pilot, than the Highlander, than the Pal Palisade and the Telluride, just to name a few of them there. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what you guys say, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2023 Traverse. First one being the LS starting at $35,915. LT cloth for $38,440. RS for $46,440. LT leather for $42,135. Premier, which actually is the one we are in today, starting at $48,595. And lastly, the high country starting at $53,395. Like I said, there's a ton. That was all pricing for the front wheel drive. If you wanted to add all-wheel drive simply add two thousand dollars approximately to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the traverse is going to be the same powering the beast is a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 310 horsepower at 6800 rpm 266 pound feet of torque coming in at 2800 rpm that power being sent to the front wheels or all wheels through a nine speed automatic zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 6.8 seconds which we'll test out here in a little bit and MPG numbers then coming in at 18 in the city, 27 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 17 city, 25 on the highway for the all wheel drive, but taking regular unleaded fuel, saving you a little bit of money there. So that's always nice. But so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the Traverse, I wanted to mention to you guys, there are some driving modes. There's a little circular dial kind of located just behind the shifter. Those drive modes are more geared towards off-road driving modes, giving you things like two wheel drive mode, four wheel drive mode, off-road mode, and then a tow and haul mode, essentially just adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the all-wheel drive system engagement. So now that we got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find it straight away. Let's put the Traverse here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, three, two, one, go baby. Oh, we're spinning. Try again. <laughs> okay. All right, definitely enough power. You're not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway. Keep in mind, we had it in front wheel drive mode, so there was some spitting there because it's a lot of power being sent to the front wheels. Even in a heavy vehicle like this, you are gonna get some spinning when they're all being sent to the front wheels. So that's why we did that. But anyway, still plenty of it acceleration. Again, you're not gonna have any issues there. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So as you would imagine, four wheel disc brakes do come standard on this thing. As far as that 60 easy or stopping distance goes, that's going to come in at 127 feet. As far as braking feel goes, I will say it is on the softer side of things. It doesn't bring you to quite as quick of a spot stop as I would have liked to have felt or seen in the Traverse. Um, Although the number itself isn't horrible. A lot of three row SUVs, especially for the size of this thing, will come in in the 130s. I've seen as high as 139 feet. So the number itself is perfectly fine. I still, I don't know, I just like braking feels with a little more firmness to them that bring you to a little quicker of a stop. That's my personal opinion. It may be different for you. But anyways, then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent five link rear suspension. As far as ride quality goes, that is actually something I noticed it's been perfectly fine I really like the ride quality in this thing maybe it's because it's a bigger SUV but it does have a nice cushion to it so it's absorbing Pennsylvania's road of perfections quite nicely so absolutely no issues when it comes to ride quality as far as steering feel goes it's fine. It's pretty much as you would expect the Traverse to feel like. It's not a super heavy steering feel. It's, it's not the loosest steering feel though either that I felt in an SUV. So honestly, it's just right for what this vehicle is. As far as cabin noise goes, you get a little bit of road noise, but the wind noise is 100% held at bay. So I've had no issues when it comes to that. So definitely impressed me there. And touching on visibility, I actually was impressed and here's why. So a lot of times when you have the third row headrest up, uh, sometimes they impede visibility, but because of the width of the Traverse, I can still see perfectly fine out the middle portion of my rear view mirror there, so out the back. So because of that, because those headrests don't take up that much space because they're more pushed to, towards the side, 
I've had no issues there. So definitely 100% on point there too. Did want to also mention there is a rear camera mirror that comes on the RS High Country and Premier. We actually do have that. I just flipped that. So I love that feature. Let me tell you guys why real quick, because when you're going on a vacation or a road trip, let's say to Ocean City, Maryland, just for an example here, a lot of times SUVs, of course, are being used for road trip vehicles and you pack a ton of stuff in the back like I do in my own SUV. And a lot of times if you have kids, you got a lot of stuff back there and it's piled up to the ceiling and then you got no rear view mirror essentially unless you have that rear camera mirror because that's on the outside of the actual vehicle. So you still can see what and who is behind you then even though the cargo was piled up to the ceiling so that is why i love rear camera mirrors and that is why it's brilliant to put it on the traverse or any suv for that matter so well done chevy for that but anyways that about rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 chevy traverse all right so here she is you guys the new 2023 chevy traverse finished in summit white in case you were curious of our exterior color name and by the way there are two new colors for 2023 those colors are named sterling gray metallic and radiant red tin coat in case you were curious of one of one of those but let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the vin first character is the number one indicating that the traverse is built and assembled in the u.s specifically michigan in case you were curious but starting up front here you will find a black front grill for the ls and rs trim levels and there's going to be some R RS badging if you were to go with that RS trim level of course and then some added chrome accents or dark chrome in our case if you were to go with one of the LT trim levels Premier or High Country and by the way I did want to mention we do happen to have the Redline Edition package which goes for $2,345 just going to add some red accents you guys can see those on the wheels as well as the side mirrors and uh, some gloss black accents surrounding this thing as well so and a bunch of other stuff but I did want to mention that as well to the sides then LED headlights do come standard for every single trim level across the board i feel like just a few years ago didn't used to be that way so that's pretty cool led daytime running lights also coming standard of course as well and in case you were curious because i always like to mention this some people think the headlights are up top headlights are actually down below uh, that's a little bit different than where it used to be a few years ago yet again and the daytime running lights and the turret signals are going to be up top so did want to mention that but anyways that about rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the traverse all right so now since we are around to the side of this one let's go ahead and start all the way to the top roof rails are going to come standard on the lt cloth trim level end up so that's definitely nice chrome window surrounds will come standard however if you go with the red line edition package you're going to get gloss black window surrounds around so do want to mention that and some gloss black door handles and some gloss black side skirts and cladding around the fenders as well but anyways rear privacy glass does come standard across the board power adjustable black side mirrors will come standard on the ls however body colored side mirrors are going to be the standard finish for the lt cloth trim leveling up unless you go with the red line package and then you're going to get gloss black side mirrors with the red line on it hence the name but anyways heated side mirrors actually do come standard for every single trim level across the board definitely gets cold in PA so I appreciate that integrated turret signals then coming with the LT cloth trim level end up and one thing I always like that Chevy does and maybe it's just me I don't know let me know in the comments but I love how they always spell out the model name on the front doors like in this case you got the traverse lettering found on the front doors I just think it's a nice little added touch or attention to detail so big fan of that so when it comes to the side skirts though because I told you guys we got the gloss black because we have the red line edition if we did not have the red line edition those side skirts would actually be body colored along with the fender surrounds only if you go with the premier or high country trim levels because otherwise for all other trim levels you're going to get that matte black finish that traditionally you usually will find on suvs but i do love the body color finish and i also like the gloss black finish that we have on this one it's much more high end in my personal opinion but let's take a look at the wheel setup 18 inch aluminum alloys for the ls and lt trims 20 inch dark aluminum alloys for the rs that's kind of the sporty package i guess you could say 20 inch machine finished aluminum alloys for the premier and then 20 inch polished aluminum alloys for the high country but 
that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the Traverse, all the way to the top, I think you guys can see that body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that, rear window wiper, of course. Some of the trim levels will give you trim level badging. However, the Premier will not, so you don't see that on the rear tailgate there. However, you do get LED taillights, so some added illumination at night. Absolutely love that. So there still are SUVs out there to this day that give you the halogen bulbs in the back. So the LEDs are where you want to be for added illumination. So nobody rear ends you, of course. And just below it all, I love the exhaust outlets on the Traverse. You get dual exhaust outlets with some very large circular chrome tips. That comes standard. However, you are going to get the rectangular tips like you're seeing now for the Premier and High Country trim levels. Either way, I am super happy. They both look good, both setups, and I love that they are not hidden below as so many SUVs are doing right now these days. It's kind of the trend. So I like this look better. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip. So but now since we are around to the back of the Traverse, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate if you go with the LT cloth trim level and up. Otherwise, it is gonna be a hands-free power tailgate for the Premier and High Country if you wanted that. But there, of course, is a button on the very bottom of the tailgate to open it up on the tailgate itself. There's also a button on the key fob. But anyways, once opened up, this is where the Traverse is really going to impress you. Cargo space behind that third row comes in at an even 23 cubic feet, which again is more than the Telluride, which comes in at 20, I believe. It's more than the Pilot, the Palisade, all those. So that is a good bit of space behind that third row. With that third row, folded down it is then going to come in at 57.8 cubic feet and with all rows folded this is very impressive 98.2 cubic feet and so this number I have memorized for plenty of SUVs. The Telluride comes in at 88 cubic feet. Palisade is 87 point something. The Highlander and Pilot are similar for 86 or 87 cubic feet as well. So 98 is substantially more than a lot of the competition. Really, the only thing I could think of right now that beats that is like the Tahoe and the Suburban and SUVs like that. So. There is a ton of space in this thing, plenty of cargo space, but 60-40 split does come standard. There's some cargo lighting back there. There's some uh, tie down anchors, chrome plated tie down anchors actually. And here's another thing that really impressed me. If you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you were going to find not just some in-floor storage, but a substantial bit of in-floor storage. So a lot of times when SUVs offer that, it's not all that much, but in the Traverse, it is fairly deep. There's a lot of in-floor storage in this thing. So you can put a tire inflator kit or an ice scraper and a bunch of other stuff as well, actually. So that was quite impressive. So overall, cargo space, the Traverse absolutely crushes it. I could probably sleep back there if I wanted to. But anyways, then make our way to the third row legroom that is going to come in at 33.5 inches. So for reference, I mean, even six feet tall, this is how much space I have back there. Of course, the second row can slide forward and backwards to make more space for the third row passengers if you needed to do that. And by the way, here's another little fun fact. There are three seats in that third row. Most SUVs give you two seats in that third row, and then you can either get bench or captain chairs in the middle row so the fact that there are three seats back there not only contributes to the better visibility because the headrests are wider but it just gives you more space for more passengers so that's so stinking cool but anyways cup holders are back there there is rear ventilation for all three rows that can be found to kind of the roof or the ceiling of this thing and to my surprise you got usb charging ports on both sides in the back as well so if your kids were sitting back there and they got their tablets or whatever they could still charge their devices even in the third row. That isn't always the case on the competition. I'm just saying. But then make our way up to the second row legroom. That comes in at 38.4 inches. For reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. And by the way, eight passenger bench seating. That comes standard on the LS. However, for the LT cloth trim level and up, 
captain's chairs are going to come standard, but the bench seating is optional. So you can get that if you want to do, but for most trim levels, captain's chairs is going to be coming standard. So you got the separation of the uh, seats in the middle row there. Heated rear seats though, coming on the Premier and High Country, you get to spoil the rear passengers a little bit, loving that. USB charging ports, of course, coming standard for the second row as well. One thing I would have liked to have seen for the second row passengers though, and maybe it's just me, but rear window sunshades, because if you're taking your kids to school or something and they're sitting there and the sun's beaming in or you're eating chick-fil-a in a parking lot or whatever the case rear window sunshades is definitely a very good thing so wouldn't have minded if chevy added them because you do tend to see them on a lot of the competition but so then making our way up to the front seats cloth seating is going to come on the ls and lt cloth trim level of course leather seating then coming with the rs and the lt leather trim level and up so you guys are looking at that of course eight-way power driver seat for the lt cloth trim level and up heated front seats for the lt cloth trim level and up ventilated front seats coming with the premier and high country only also memory settings for those two trim levels as well but overall seat cover was actually perfectly fine it had no issues and I like kind of the the lighter color leather accents to our black leather that we have here today I think it looks very classy I like it so anyway seat comfort is perfectly fine but then taking a look at the steering wheel this tilt and telescoping is wrapped in urethane for the LS however here's a new little feature for 2023 leather wrapped for the LT cloth trim level end up that didn't used to be the case but power adjustable steering wheel coming with the premier and high country and then a heated steering wheel coming with the rs trim level end up so that is pretty darn cool that button's on the steering wheel itself by the way but i do like the steering wheel no issues with that whatsoever but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key you got your uh, chevy bow tie logo on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate of course and the circular button in the middle that's a remote start that comes in the lt cloth trim level end up but ultimately it is all keyless enter with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that black engine start button located just to the left of those air vents there and so once started up again this is something new i i haven't reviewed the traverse for a few years now but the gauge cluster is definitely new to me i like it it's a much larger digital screen front and center you got tachometer all the way to your left fuel information is on your right but having said that since this digital is very customizable by using the steering wheel mounting controls found on the right side of the steering wheel you can choose to display a digital speedometer if you wanted to or you can choose to display your traditional kind of gauge cluster setup there's trip a trip b of course how many miles you have left until you hit empty uh, oil life remaining. I always love seeing the oil life indicators. You know when to get your next oil change. There's tire pressure indicator for each individual tire. You got to love that as well. Air filter life. The list goes on. So basically every single thing you could possibly want up on the digital portion of the gauges. I love that digital speedometer. But anyways, now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. There is a two panel power sunroof for the high country. It's going to be optional on some of the other trims. Most of the other trims actually. We do have that. So absolutely love that. It's letting so much more light here garage door opener is going to be optional it's for up to three different garage doors found in the bottom portion of that rear view mirror we actually have that option as well wireless phone charger for the lt cloth trim level and up that's located just in front of the shifter there tri-zone climate control coming standard for every single trim level so that means both driver passenger and the rear passengers can all set their own individual temperatures uh, to be comfortable, I guess. So just in front of the shifter, you got a 12 volt power outlet, a couple USB charging ports, actually an aux port as well. And there's an SD card slot right there. Let me see what that is. It looks like uh, maps for North America. Okay, so they put the little uh, SD card slot in there for the navigation maps, I guess. That's interesting. I've never seen that before. But anyways, to the right of the shifter, you got dual cup holders, got an electric mechanical parking brake, of course. And within the center armrest, you got lighting within there, actually. I like that. Decent amount of storage. Storage, a little tray up top there as well and a little clip on the back side of that center armrest too but like i said what i really like about this one is the black leather contrast with the light leather kind of the pinstriping i guess you could say and there's contrast stitching found in the doors just above the passenger side glove box it's actually a very classy look it looks very good so i'm a big fan but anyways now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here you're going to find a seven inch color touchscreen display for the ls 
eight inch color touchscreen display is gonna come with the LT cloth trim level end up. Either way, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Factory navigation system is gonna come with the RS trim level and up. You can check out your climate control settings, of course, up there, along with your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, you're gonna find six speakers coming with the LS and LT cloth. However, if you were to go with the RS trim level and up, you're gonna get a 10 speaker Bose sound system. So. Having said that, that Bose sound system is the one we have today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. All right, absolute ton of bass. That is without question. There's definitely a subwoofer or two in this thing. That was a ton of bass. Clarity was perfectly fine as well. Honestly, a 10 speaker Bose sound system really is going to be overkill for the Traverse. So I, I absolutely love it. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put this thing in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. And it looks like we actually get a 360 degree monitor as well, which is pretty darn cool, giving you that bird's eye view, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, automatic emergency braking, a following distance indicator, forward collision alert, front pedestrian braking, lane keep assist, and lane departure warning as well. And if you were to go with that RS trim level and up, you are also going to get automatic emergency braking to go along with all of that. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Traverse, I think the big seller for the Traverse really is the space. It's so much more than a lot of the competition. 98.2 cubic feet, that is a wonderful number. So if you like to go on vacation with your family and you got kids, this thing is definitely something you might wanna check out. Very good looking SUV too, in my personal opinion at least. And it's specifically the spec that we have today. It looks absolutely amazing in my opinion. Good starting price point as well. So for the LS trim level, like I said, I think I said $35,000. For 98.2 cubic feet, that is dang good, you guys. As far as room for improvement, quite honestly, the big thing for me would be for Chevy to at least add an option, um, maybe just on some of the trim levels for the rear window sunshades. Uh, that's something that I always look for in SUVs and something I don't have in my current SUV that I would love to have because we have needed them so many times. Other than that, I think a full digital gauge cluster would look pretty darn good in this thing as well but that's really all i can come up with everything else looks pretty darn good but let me know what you guys think of the new traverse in the comment section below and that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold